To dink or not to dink? That is the question. Hey guys, I finally got a chance to try the new dink paddles from South Florida. And I gotta tell you, you wanna hear about it. Stay tuned. The name of these paddles are kinda unique. It is Ding K. So when you look at this, it's D-I-N-G-K, and you're like, well, how do I pronounce that? Well, if you actually look up the name Dink in the dictionary, this is gonna be the phonics spelling of it. So this guy actually spelled it Dink. So this is the Dink paddle. And uh, this guy is based out of Miami, Florida, and he comes in two models, and he's got a third one here. I'm gonna be, I'll be reviewing this one next week. This is the Hyperfoam 19 millimeter uh, Hyper Pro X. We'll be reviewing that next week. Okay, let's talk about the two different shapes. We obviously have the 16 and a half by seven and a half, and we got the 16 by eight. These both have a 5.3 inch handle grip length and a four inch circumference on the grip. So a little bit smaller grip. Let's talk a little bit about this in a second. They come in a weight from 7.9 ounces to 8.3 ounces. These are a true polypropylene core paddle. So these are old school paddle, polypropylene cores, no thermoform, no unibody, but they have the carbon fiber face. And if you look at the microscopic view on these, this carbon fiber face looks like it's got a little bit of uniqueness to it, a little bit uh, more of these little articles and stuff that you see on this view here that make it a little bit more gritty. So I, I gotta tell you, I was very impressed with the grit on this paddle. Now this is mid-weighted and it is a 14 millimeter paddle. Both are 14 millimeter. They measure out at 16 because of the edge guard adds a couple millimeters to it. With the core and the weight of this paddle, so it feels very comfortable. It feels very soft, very plush feeling paddle. But because it's 14 millimeter core, it has some put away power. So a nice little blend that uh, Dink has done good with their paddles. Out of the two different paddle shapes, I actually preferred the control model a little bit better on this one, just because I really am a control player and I'm trying to get away from some of the elongated ones. Some of the elongated paddles, I get a little bit greedy at the kitchen and I try to take the ball out of there and just use the end of the paddle a lot. And so I, I tend to lean towards the control model, but I love both of these models and I've played both of these models. One of the differences is with the 14 millimeters, because they're so thin, when you hit the ball way out here on the end, you're gonna feel a little bit of the vibration. So you'll feel a little bit of vibration on the paddle with the flex of the plastic, but this was not unpleasant. This was not an unpleasant feeling paddle, no matter where you hit it. It felt a little bit unstable, but it really wasn't. And part of that reason is also because of the four inch grip. This is a very small grip, one of the smallest grips on the market with four inch circumference. And so that's really good for ladies with small hands, that's perfect. And then for guys, if you need a bigger grip, you can just throw another overwrap on it. So I, I actually like the smaller grip because four inches is very good for those of us with small hands. And so really, comfortable feeling paddle in your hands. They're, they're solidly made. Let's talk about the look of it. I, I really love the white. I don't know, I'm a sucker for white paddles. I like the white edges, I like the white letters. I like the graphics on this paddle. I think liking the way your paddle looks matters when you're playing pickleball. I know that sounds weird, but like I, I play better when I like the paddle that's in my hands. And so I like looking down at the paddle and knowing that it looks good, so therefore I look good and hopefully the play follows that. No, I don't know. I just like the white paddles. <laughs> it's, just, it's a weird thing. Anyway, but I like the graphics on it. It looks really nice. But let's talk about the performance of this guy because that's really what matters. Is it worth my time and my money to play this paddle? The answer to that is, well, it depends. <laughs> it depends on you. It depends on what you like to play. I like this paddle. I like the 14 millimeter core because it allows power and, and put away. I think that they've done a really good job of stabilizing this paddle. Because of the way that they've done their core and the way that they've got this made, it is very stable paddle, which really matters because in, in, with 14 millimeter paddles, you need to have good defense with it because offensively, that's what they're there for. Defensively, you wanna be able to have control and be able to put the ball where you want it. So you wanna make sure that the 14 millimeter paddles are controllable. These paddles are controllable. I really enjoyed playing with them. In the dinks, I felt like it, you know, no matter what, I was very comfortable in the dinks. I could put cut spin, side spin, top spin, I could push, dink, I could hit all the shots I wanted to, and I really didn't have to work that hard. The paddle did a lot of the work for me. I, I could take the ball out of the air comfortably with this, the longer one, and, and not have the ball go not where I intended. So very good at taking the ball out of the air with it and, and feeling stable with that. And let's just move our way back from the kitchen line. Resets uh, from no man's lands or resets from speed ups or even just in hands battles. This paddle performed very well. I was able to reset any shot that was thrown at me. I was able to just reset it softly over the net. No problem whatsoever. 
I was able to um, just really hit control shots, third shot drops, very good third shot drops. I was able to just put it. So I always gauge paddles by if I play them, what's my learning curve? This is a zero day learning curve. I was able to pick this paddle up and within half a game, figure it out and be able to play well. And some shots were immediate. Some shots were exactly like my other ones. And I think every shot for every paddle feels a little bit different and you got to get used to it. Each paddle I play, I can pick out 10 different paddles and I can tell you how they feel a little bit different than each other. Okay, all of them using the same materials, all of them using the same type of core materials, but they're all a little bit different, a little bit variance, a little bit different shape, a little different weighting, and this changes every paddle in that way. Now, even though it's a, it's a four inch circumference, it is still a, kind of a blocky grip. It's still a hexagon grip, but you got a really good bevel uh, pronunciation. So you can see the bevels here. Um, you can see the bevels are pretty pronounced on here. So you can see where you can feel the bevels where you can put your knuckles and get it in the right spot. I found that I like the way the handle feels because of that and being able to switch bevels and be able to rotate the paddle. With drives, I thought that the drives were great with these paddles. The paddle grabbed just fine. Um, my driving is not the best. You'll see me dump them into the net more than not because I'm more of a control player. The, the worst shot in my bag is the third shot drive. Okay, just saying, it's the worst shot in my bag. My, on my, I'm a control player. Uh, but with these drives, I was able to get dip on it when I hit the form right, when I was actually in the right place, working the right movements, I was able to hit beautiful shots with these paddles with a lot of dip. So the, the T700 carbon fiber face, just like all the others, okay? This, I sound like a broken record because this is a repetitive thing. Everybody's using carbon fiber and everybody's trying to do something different and everybody's doing. So a lot of this is gonna come down to, do you like the shape of the paddle? Do you like the look of the paddle? Do you like the feel of the paddle? because they're all gonna be very comparable in the performance metrics, okay? So don't, don't think that it's gonna be one versus the other, like really you need to look at, okay, this is a $200 paddle, this is a $99 paddle. Which one should I buy? Well, you need to play both of them so you can feel the way they play and also the one you like to look at. If you don't like looking at it, don't buy it because you're gonna hate it every time you pick it up. Okay, so you wanna pick a paddle that you like the look of. Now these paddles are $200, that's usually around the price point, so you have some low-end models where people are going you know, down below this and they're going down to the $99 and they're gonna be all over the place here. The paddle here is $200 with our discount, you get a 10% discount in the, the, using our code below. Thank you, Dink, for sending us these paddles to review for you. Uh, and guys, thank you so much for supporting us. Anytime you use our code, that supports us and allows us to bring you these great uh, reviews and discounts for you. So if you look in the description below, you can get our discount code. So thank you so much for that. And if you don't like Dink or you want to try a different paddle, check these out.